Hello and welcome back to Comic Relief. This time we are taking a look at the second MLP Omnibus covering issues 13 through 24. First up is My Little Pirate Friendship Ahoy. I really like that this actually addresses the fact that Twilight's a princess now. The stuff with crabs and Pinky was weird, but at least it had a payoff. I wasn't super invested in the whole thing with Fluttershy and her fish, but it's whatever. And I am weirded out that they actually did alcohol in this. Like, they never call it alcohol, but it's very clearly alcohol. Like, with the stereotypical hiccups in telling the truth and saying you love everyone. Overall, it was actually a much better arc than I thought it was going to end up being, especially from the description. So, yeah, I actually really like this one. Next up is The Bookworm, which technically this arc doesn't have a title, but I'm going to call it The Bookworm. I thought it was okay. I enjoyed it, but I don't really have a lot to say about it. I mean, it was fine. I was never really heavily invested, and the bookworm wasn't really a compelling character, or a compelling antagonist, really. I mean, I, honestly, I was more interesting when Daring Do came out of one of the cocoons than I was for basically anything else. Next up is the big one, Reflections. This one is a mix of amazing and not so amazing. We start the entire thing off with Luna not knowing the phase of her own moon, which is a little weird. Then she waits an entire week before telling anyone that her sister disappeared, which, okay, that's concerning. There's a point in the first issue where Pinky eats gum from the underside of a table and no, just no, not even Pinky would do that. Please no, that's disgusting. It's a little weird that Star Swirl in this is a lot like Pinky and actually has friends because that tells me that whoever wrote this didn't actually watch the finale of season three very closely. But at the same time they did because they have that emotional scene where uh, Twilight's like, ah, oh, but I'm a princess now, and da-da-da-da-da, and this is all so confusing. So it's kind of weird, and I'm not really sure how to feel about that whole thing. Also, why is there a giant penny and some actual historical flags and a disassembled gun in Star Swirl the Bearded's, well, basically basement? That's just strange. What was up with the drug trip mirror thing? That was weird. It's jarring to go from a canon where Star Swirl disappeared before Discord existed to one where he was around after Luna's banishment. Also, why is this Sombra not in pieces if the two worlds are so closely connected that punching evil Celestia hurts good Celestia? That doesn't make any sense. I really like the story, but I don't think that enough was done with the alternate world or the concept. I, I do like that it was very focused on this one aspect, but I wish that the world could have been explored more. I would have loved to see alternate Chrysalis, I would have loved to see the alternate main six, aside from that one shot that we see after the end of the last comic. I don't know, I just wish more could have been done with it, because it's such an interesting concept, and they basically cut themselves off for it for the rest of time, which is very, very sad. Next up is Manhattan Mysteries, and I kind of like this one, yeah. I really like that Trixie and Babs both got a spotlight, mostly because back then Trixie didn't have much of a spotlight and Babs basically didn't exist after season 3 ended. So, yeah. Also, there wasn't really enough information for the reader to figure out the mystery beforehand, and I really hate stories that do that, um, with maybe one or two exceptions. I'm, I'm pretty okay with Sherlock Holmes stories, because the entire point is that Sherlock is super mega genius, and you aren't quite sure what's going on until he explains it. And I get the appeal of that, but I prefer the BBC Sherlock route, where we get to see what's going on inside the, the, the person's head, uh, and we get to see the evidence and come to our own conclusions before the actual mystery is fully revealed. But maybe that's just me. Issue 23 is about the pets, saving their owners and the rest of the town from... What was it, a, a Kelpie, I think? It was fine. It was fine. I'm I'm fine. It, it was it was okay. I didn't really care about any of that. Issue 24. 
uh, or as I like to call it, Memes the Comic. But yeah, no, it's about the CMC, Fluttershy, and Discord as they go off and do adventure stuff through time and space, and it's mostly just memes and references. Also, how does Discord have an old friend? Like, he literally didn't have a friend before Fluttershy, and he says, this was my friend before you! To which I say, did you even watch season three? Why do none of these writers watch the show? I'm sorry, this tends to happen a lot. I know that a lot of these comics get disproven later on, because, oh hey, an episode comes out two years down the line that disproves the comic because, whoops, the people who write the show don't actually read the comics. But, yeah. Overall, I thought this was a pretty decent omnibus. It's going to be a few more weeks before we dive into comics again, so uh, next time I do believe we are looking at the first Friends Forever omnibus and the third MLP omnibus. So that's going to be in a few weeks from now. But until then, we're going to switch back to Fim Fiction Spotlight. And you're going to like what the next one is, because the next one is robots. And robots are cool. Maybe that's just me, though. Maybe I'm weird. Do you like robots? Tell me in the comments. Go ahead and like and subscribe, blah blah blah. You know the drill. I have places to support me in the description. And I will see you all next time. Here's the outro music. Yeah.